Now, I hate it when people overpromise and underdeliver, but I genuinely think that this that I'm about to show you is an absolute game changer for research, PhDs, and anyone doing higher level specialized knowledge jobs. It's ChatGPT's latest release. It's a beta feature called Code Interpreter. I've been playing with it for a few days and I am just amazed by what it can do. Let's check it out. Now, the first thing you need to do is sign up to ChatGPT+. It's about 20 to $25, I think, a month. And uh, it is, in the past, been questionable whether or not you really need to use it. I think you definitely need to use it if you want to use it for the higher sort of uh, understanding, higher creativity language models. But now I think with Code Interpreter, it is well worth the money every month. Essentially, you're getting a data scientist sat next to you through all of your research at all times. Once you're signed up to ChatGPT+, the first thing you need to do is head down to your settings and you'll get this pop-up. Then you go to beta features and down here you can turn on code interpreter. And then you should be able to see up here, you get code interpreter, which is right here. The question is, what can you do with it? Essentially, any data scientist thing you can think of, code interpreter will give it a good hard go. So here I've got some data about the plasmonic uh, responses from UV Viz. The one thing I love about this, first of all, is that it takes the data and it says, hey, this data set contains all of this stuff. And it just sort of like knows immediately what's inside it. Sometimes it needs to tidy up the data, but it just seems to try things until it gets an idea about what's going on. So here we can see that it's suggesting for initial analysis, we can do certain things, we can uh, start generating descriptive statistics, and it's just sort of like, doing all of the heavy lifting for you. And all I've done is provided the raw data that came straight out of the machine. And now it's saying, hey, let's visualize the absorption spectrum for each sample. So it's giving me some descriptive statistics about each sample, which is brilliant. But now it's working on giving me a plot. Now this would have taken me hours. This would have taken me ages to go through this, think about it, and as you can see, it's now given me absorption spectrum for each sample, and all I have to do is say save image as, and then it never actually includes the, the file uh, ending, so I need to go .jpg, but then it's saved and I can use that in a report. It's brilliant because here we are, it's still going. Here are the correlation coefficients between wavelength and absorption for each sample. It's doing the sophisticated analysis all on its own without even prompting. Remember, I've only given it one prompt and it's doing all of this. I think this is just incredible. The last thing I love is right down here, these results suggest that the absorption of light by the sample generally decreases as the wavelength increases, and this might indicate the interaction between the silver nanowires and carbon nanotubes influences the absorption properties of the mixture. Very interesting. So it's giving me not only the results, but it's also interpreting the results so that I can then just sort of like start thinking about the next steps. Putting in raw data to this thing is just incredible. And I really feel like it's just changed the game for PhD students. You can put in other people's data, you can put in your own data sets, and then you let this program, this code interpreter, just do all of the data science stuff for you. I really cannot overstate the effect that this tool would have had on productivity during my PhDs and postdocs. It's just incredible. Let's add some more data and see what happens. I've now uploaded some solar cell efficiencies that I got from using different types of transparent electrodes. All I've asked it for is a visual summary of this data. So first of all, it will go in and have a look to see what kind of data we're working with. It opens it up and now it knows that we've got this, short circuit current, open circuit current, fill factor, series resistance, shunt resistance, and efficiency. So now before performing any visual summary, they're gonna clean the data. This is stuff that you do manually as a researcher 
researcher, but now it's just going on in front of you. Something would have taken me half an hour to an hour is now getting done in like minutes. Now this is crazy, right? It's come across a problem and it's asking me, okay, apologies for the confusion. It seems that blah, blah, blah could not execute. Then it's now talking to me like it's an actual kind of like supervisor or collaborator. It's asking, could you clarify and provide more information about the structure of this data, which is brilliant. It's now asking and prompting me, am I the AI or is that the AI? Oh, I know what it's saying. I've looked at my data and it's now confused about this sort of like thing here. Is there, there's nothing in here, but it's expecting stuff to be in here. So I just have to say here that the row, each row is a separate device measurement. Now we'll use that clarification to actually provide with a visual summary of the work. And here we are, this is what we've ended up with. We've got the different devices with the short circuit current, the open circuit voltage, fill factor, and now I've got a visual representation of what happened to each of the elements that I was measuring for each type of device and uh, transparent electrode that I was testing. Now, this is just incredible. I cannot believe we're at a stage where something like this that would have taken me ages can now be done in a matter of minutes. Incredible. If you are on the fence about getting ChatGPT+, I really think this code interpreter is the thing that will push most people over that fence to actually purchasing it. Now, I think that anyone in a PhD should start using AI tools like Code Interpreter for their work. Not only does it improve your efficiency and productivity, but also it can give you actual kind of like uh, uh, conclusions from your work that maybe you hadn't thought about. You can talk to it like a collaborator. It can replace a load of different grunt work that would take you so much time. And I think now this has really shown its power for the future of high level knowledge work. Incredible stuff from OpenAI. And uh, it's really sort of like a nod to the future of what will become possible. And uh, I don't know if I'm like some sort of granddad at this point where I'm like, oh my God, I wish I had this in my day. But really, it is just something that is just going to be so valuable going forward. Now, if you love this video, go check out this one because here I talk about the three AI tools that are going to actually be useful that you'll use every day. I know I use them, so go check it out there and really empower ChatGPT to work for you in the most efficient way possible. So there we have it. That's how I think ChatGPT will be changing the future for PhD and researchers. I cannot overestimate how important this tool will become in the future going forward. Whether or not it's ChatGPT or another tool like this that's released by another company, the fact that you've got a data scientist in your pocket with you at all times is just super valuable. And in my opinion, well worth the money that you spend on ChatGPT+. Now let me know in the comments what you would add. Have you tried it? Let me know what visualizations you've created. I'd love to see it. But also remember, there are more ways that you can engage with me. The first way is to sign up to my newsletter. Head over to andrewstapleton.com.au forward slash newsletter. The link is in the description. And when you sign up, you'll get five emails over about two weeks. Everything from the tools I've used, the podcasts I've been on, how to write the perfect abstract and more is exclusive content only available for free. So go sign up now and also go check out academiainsider.com. That's my project where I've got my eBooks, the Ultimate Academic Writing Toolkit, as well as the PhD Survival Guide. I've also got my resource pack for applying for grad school there. I've got blogs and forums, and it's all there to make sure that your PhD and academia works for you. All right, then I'll see you in the next video.